This is a slurry vac that we built for sort of a personal project. It is relatively unassuming. Bum -ba -da -bum. It's powered by a supercharger from a 3.8 liter V6. I believe they used them in Grand Prix and Buicks. I am pretty sure it has M90 rotors. That is hooked up to a 15 horse Chinese motor, which we got from the Princess Auto. And the system is plumbed backwards into the supercharger, so we're on the negative side here. That's normally where your throttle body would go. We're pulling that energy through some aluminum pipes into some plastic pipes into a cyclone and all the way up into a 60 gallon compressor tank. So that tank is our primary slurry tank. And then that goes around, here's our water hookup, so that comes all the way back down to this three inch uh, cam fitting, which we hook up to our suction hose. So that all looks a little low down there, but it sits up on a deck truck, so it all ends up being three, four feet off the ground. Control panel is there. Have an engine throttle, emergency shut off, two little momentary toggles for the tank dump. An hour and, a, and rev meter and uh, three indicator lights for tank level. There's float switches up the side of this guy here and on the secondary tank there to indicate the fill volume. We just bastardized this tank, cut the top off it, uh, welded on a flange and some bullet hinges, a couple draw latches here, and then, oh, you can see in there, that's our slurry tank. This whole tank is mounted onto a pivot mechanism, so it's sort of three-point connection. A couple Chinesium pillow blocks there on the one side, linear actuator on the other side. That's a 48-inch actuator, it's supposedly good for about 2,000 pounds. It is glacially slow, but it does dump the tank. We can dump it about 110 degrees from this orientation here. In the job box, also from the Princess Auto, we have our 420cc, 15 horse motor, driving that supercharger through a custom double V-belt, the exhaust shooting up there. This is an inline air filter here, it's just sort of the last line of dis defense, so that any debris that makes it through the tank and through the cyclone there doesn't also Take a trip through the supercharger lobes. Here we have sort of our mechanical pressure regulator. It's just a wastegate, a 50 mil wastegate that was plumbed backwards so the vacuum is trying to draw the valve open. So it should soften any spikes in vacuum pressure. Um, it also has got a vacuum signal hooked up on the back side of the diaphragm here so that it's just a little bit more assistance to try and pull that valve open if something goes wrong. This uh, cheap plastic cyclone, I think it's fairly likely that it will fail under any substantial vacuum. Dust collection systems don't really pull any actual vacuum, they're more about moving air velocity. So that will probably fail. If that doesn't fail, hopefully this valve kicks in in a high pressure situation, or I should say high low pressure situation. And if not, we also have an electronic cutoff here, so that's just a pressure switch. It's adjustable, it's kind of cool. Just an open and closed circuit, and that's wired through a kill relay, which shuts the engine off. We also have uh, the tank floats there, the, the full float on that tank, and the float switch down here, they also are wired through that kill relay. So if either of those tanks fill up, it shuts down the motor. We don't have to worry about sucking water anywhere we don't want to. As you can see, there's not a lot of room in this box, sort of a tight squeeze. The, uh, this is an electric start motor, so we don't have to try and get down there and pull that cord so the electric starts just right there. There's not a lot of space, but there is a lot of airflow through here. So all that air that this guy moves, you can see the filter down there, just gets dumped into the box. So we got 500 CFM through this box, which 
should be more than enough air changes to keep that motor cool, evacuate the exhaust and feed it with air. So I'm not too worried about that. I mean, obviously I wouldn't run it with the lid closed. This uh, belt system was a custom build. We didn't, again, have a lot of room. We tried it with single belts, just wasn't adequate. Obviously this supercharger had a six rib on it. I couldn't find a V-belt conversion for this. Maybe I didn't look very hard, but I couldn't. So we whipped these up just with some hubs from the Princess Auto that we turned on a lathe and some steel pulleys. Yeah, they got a bit of wobble. They're not the, again, they're from Princess Auto. They're not super precision pulleys, but they do seem to work. So hopefully we can spin it up and see what she does. This whole unit was sort of built um, on a theory. We had no, the only real calculation I could do was the amount of airflow we could possibly move. So I knew I was shooting for about 500 CFM, which I can do with this motor in this belt ratio through this M90 supercharger. So that was in theory possible. What I didn't know is if 15 horsepower was enough to drive a supercharger loaded or unloaded. I mean, it's possible it could have driven it just fine with no load. And the second we try and pull vacuum on the backside, it could just stall out the motor. I also didn't know if these superchargers, they are positive displacement. It stands to reason that if they can build pressure on that side, they can pull vacuum on that side. Again, I didn't really know, so it was a bit of guesswork. Unfortunately, we had to get to this point. So this whole frame welded up and everything coupled together and the motor and the bot and the supercharger sacrificed and all of this sort of hooked up before we could even verify a theory. So we did run a test. We were able to pull uh, a three inch water column up about nine feet. So this was sitting on the back of the truck. We were pulling water off the ground and we were able to say pull, pull nine feet of water. Uh, I think we built about 12 or 15 inches of mercury. I can't remember what it was, but it did it. We did it at idle because at the time we were having belt problems um, and it seemed to do it just fine. So we will continue to explore what it's capable of. I'll probably make a larger version of this and put it on the tank somewhere just so, just as an extra line of defense. I really don't want to, I don't want to implode this cyclone. They are about $400. And then this tank, I especially don't want to implode the tank. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I don't really want to break anything on this. So I just want to put as many kill switches and pressure valves on it that I can. This whole thing sits in a two inch uh, aluminum structure. Just kind of contains everything nicely. I put a plate cut with a rig point in the middle here, just so we can pick it off in the truck with a boom. And it just kind of packages it up real nice. So yeah, there's that. We'll uh, hook a battery up to it and then fire it up and see how it runs. It is quite noisy. Another thing we didn't know was how loud a a supercharger was. I assumed they would be quite noisy without the, a motor on the back end of them to muffle them. And they are, they do make quite a bit of sound. So I might end up running the other side of that supercharger through a muffler or something out the side of the box. And I don't know, we're gonna do a few more experiments on it first, but I'll let you hear it and, and see what she can do.
super scientific. Lord. Yeah, I'll watch the pressures too. I'll shut it down if it gets crazy. Yeah, I know, that was terrifying. Yeah, it goes to about 20. Yeah, I thought it's just, I saw it hit about 20. Oh, that was just an idle egg. I know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nasty. Fuck yeah. Yeah, and that was just, yeah, just at idle and... I don't think you ever need more power than that. Well, it's more about airflow if we need to pull more CFMs, right? But, I mean, that was pretty good. I mean, that had to be... That's gotta be 10 feet, right? Yeah. Uphill most. Yeah. Hmm. That's not bad. So there you go. And if you're not in a hurry, I'll show you the tank dump. So there you go, a little slurry vac made with supercharger and a whole bunch of random parts. We build a lot of kind of quirky stuff like this, uh, largely out of personal interest. Uh, some of it we need, so we build a lot of our own work equipment and toys. So there's always a project sort of like this on the go. We have a few around here that I'll make some videos of. And then some of the stuff we build going forward, I will try and be good about keeping track of. Most of it turns out sort of like this. I feel like we do a pretty good job with our builds and put the, the time and, and money into it to make it something worth building. Even this, I don't know if it will ever see 
any kind of real use, but if it does, I want it to be something that I could realistically rely on. And anyway, so hopefully more to come.